Second Karui Ward, Val Orb, second Reap. I can. I'm just too bad for that. Ah, oh, stack dick. Stack dick! Oh! Money! Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh! oh, yeah, money, baby. How much is it? A chaos, it's not Miller League. Pretty chaos, hey, at least. Just a self crafted one. Soul Taker? Making a noise like an exalted orb and probably it's worth like 5 chaos. And it is. Hey, 40 chaos. Oh. Money's. Money's in the bank. If, if you need a carry, Lemon Tricks is your man, dude. He's going nuts in these maps. <laughs> oh, God. Come on again. Let's do it. Lemon Tricks, you got this. Best carry in the Hall of Grandmasters in EU West, Blight League, dude. <laughs> oh, what you doing? <laughs> oh my god. Ah. There you go. Easy. Best, best character. Easy. Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. So, they three of the blind league is done and if you followed my first uh, two videos uh, or three videos uh, you know that I started as a poison assassin but it didn't really turn out the way I wanted I feel it's like super weak compared to other league starters so maybe it's something for uh, later gear or at least like some more investment needed to make it good but for early stages without currency it's probably not the best league starter so and I didn't really have fun with it, uh, plus the bucks that I had with it. So I said, to my, or at least I started completely new from scratch yesterday. So I started a Slayer now. Uh, I have like almost 15 hours of playtime. And uh, yeah, I'm level 85 already. So I leveled this character completely up yesterday. I uh, was starting to do some uh, mapping and already could do my first high tier map. And this is exactly what I mean. Like this build does so much damage. It's like I'm one-shotting literally every pack that I see. And I have a, a separate single target setup. Which is like 10 times better clear and damage as the poison build. Okay. So I don't want to talk too much about the poison build. This is the current build that I'm playing. It's an elemental hit slayer. Uh, it's the first time I'm playing elemental hit. I never touched it before. I just know that it is uh, very strong but also can get very, very expensive. So the thing is, um, since you say like, yeah, now, uh, wait, day three, you have a soft spot, wait, you have a Chaos Heart, you have a six link bow, like what the fuck happened yesterday, you know? Uh, the thing is, they um, made a new, uh, where is it? They made a new divination, I, I don't even know if it's new or uh, it existed before, but there is one that, uh, that is called the Imp uh, Imperial Legacy. Right? And if you have 22 of these cards, you drop like in Act 9 and also in Desert Map and something like that, um, you get a 6-linked Imperial Bow. And an Imperial Bow is basically what you want to have for Ellie hit because you scale only far damage, basically, right? So, um, this card is not expensive and um, it's like 4 Alchemy, like, yeah, 1.5 Chaos each card. So, you end up, I, I think I paid like 40 Chaos or 45 Chaos for my 6 link bow and then I just quality it and 
chaos spammed a little bit, so nothing too fancy, right? So, 6 link, 40 chaos, not a problem. The chaos I got for uh, 80 chaos yesterday. Uh, and if you remember, on day 2 of the league, I found 2 exalts. So that's why I could level up that fast, because with the 2 exalts, when I sold my, uh, my poison gear, uh, with that is actually, uh, I remember buying the wasp nest for like 15 chaos per piece, and I sold them for like 40 uh, per piece. Then um, the, what else did I had? The tabula that I that I had on the build after the leveling here, after I bought the chaos, I sold this one as well. Then the helm enchant that I had, I bought the, the helm for like 15 chaos, and I sold it for 30. So there has been some drops that I could sell. It also um, about selling the old stuff from the poison dude. Uh, also, like, all the gems that I had, like, two chaos per piece, like, some leveled up, like, 17, 18 gems or something. They do sell for some reason. So, just coming in a, a couple of chaos for, uh, here and there. At the moment, I have, like, 50 chaos left. So, not too fancy, not too much. But still, the gear could, uh, or at least was, um, I, I could build uh, around this, right? So, I have, like, three, four exalts gear at the moment on this character. I would say we're just going to run a, a quick map here i would say like uh do we have something here seven factory map yeah why not so you can see the current playstyle although i have to say this is probably not um I'm, I'm struggling between elemental hit something i never played and i played for the first time or the impale tornado shot these are the two builds that i had in my mind because i usually i intentionally want to go melee after the poison change but i think melee is not great for the leak mechanic so it's always better to just stand in the middle and just shoot away um or kill away from range and then you have more control over the waves that are collapsing uh, onto the pump right uh, with a melee character you always have to decide in which direction you go and on the other side the mobs are spawning and, and closing in you know it's i feel like range is just way more easier controlling the blight mechanic at all especially later on with blight um the blighted maps where i have like one really big growth here right so to the build, uh, basically I have a six linked um, elemental hit for clearing, which is elemental hit, combustion support, chain support, alley damage, then GMP and merge archer. So this merge archer, then a greater multiple, then we have chain support. So three supports that are just for clearing, right? And then I have a separate single target with damage on full life, uh, also combustion alley hit. So the difference is this attack is doing at the moment like 100,000 and the other one is doing like a 25,000, right? So the area of effect clear is like a 25 and then single target 100,000. But you will see that it's actually a really nice build. You're just like shooting in there and basically literally just one-shotting every pack. And this with a leak start, right? So, I mean, obviously it's a little bit better gear than leak start at the moment, but still it's not anything good. None of my gems have any kind of quality, neither they are level 20 or something. But this is what I think it's nice, you know, uh, especially for a leak starter. And if I compare it to the poison where I just had to stack up poison to kill white mobs, it's just like I'd rather like 10 times take a build like that and have fun just running through the map and just kill everything rather than uh, having troubles in a tier 5 map. So, as I said, you're just going to run around and uh, yeah, just basically one shot everything as you see. It's really a nice build. The thing is only, it feels a little bit clunky because you really, I mean, yeah, no... Oh, nice leg. No nothing, uh, or at least uh, not big news, you have to hit with this thing, okay? So, uh, compared to Tornado Shot, because I will compare uh, Elemental Hit and Tornado Shot quite often in this uh, video, because I'm still not sure if I should do Tornado Shot or not. Uh, but you really have to hit with it, right? So, Tornado Shot, you just have to aim at this target. Uh, and then you will do your damage and with this one if you're hitting or if you're missing your alley hit and it doesn't have a, a really big hitbox you're just doing literally no damage right that's why it sometimes feels a little bit clunky but in the other hand the projectiles here for the clear is like super nice right the projectiles are chaining that means I have five projectiles and each of that protect uh, projectiles will chain to two additional targets so the clear itself it just like run through it pretty much plays like the tornado shot itself right so, uh, I think uh, map showcase should be actually fine, but I just wanted to show you guys uh, how fun, or at least how 
nice it can be to have a leak starter like that where if you drop a high tier you're just gonna run blindly because you want to progress and not think about ah oh, can i run this i don't know i'm struggling with tier two maps tier three maps i just found a tier eight map i cannot do it because i'm not tanky enough and blah 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 you know this is the thing you will not have so let's do this blight encounter real quick and then we talk a little bit about the build because this should not be like a full uh, build guide or anything like that because it's not like min max or anything like that and I will probably switch to tornado shot later on anyway so I'm going to talk a little bit about the build how I think I mean I as I said I never played elemental hit it's just I'll try to explain how it works the way I feel it works right it might be wrong uh, but I think I have an idea on how this works and how you can pretty much uh, really nicely scale it. Oh, more here, more here, some more of this. Probably got a fire tower over here. Oh, shit proximity shields here. Oh, first map of the day. So, let's see about the loot. The summoner. Any more mobs? Sometimes they're like buggy here. Oh, there we go. Some more oils. The oils could be, come in very, very handy, especially for this build. Or at least like any other build too. So anything good? Not really. So I think map showcase is pretty much through. I think there was a leech in pylon over... Yeah, there was a leech in pylon. So let's do that too. Why not? Good old legion. Maybe we get an exalt drop. That would be nice. But as you see, clear, it's like, just shoot and it chains through all the enemies. It's it's really nice, actually. So, let's clear this, dead. And I'm having way more fun with this build as well. So here, and all the Legion mechanic is clear, so we're just gonna dance around. Having a heavy belt here. Some more here, some more there, and should be done for the most part. There we go. Now we're through. And it is a uh, belt of the deceiver. They are selling for like a chaos or so. What are you doing? So, check. Map showcase done. So, uh, for the quick part here, um, there will no, uh, there is no path of billing for this. As I said, it's just uh, probably a go-through build for me at the moment because I never played it. I just want to try it. Uh, because the Tornado Shot Impale would also be a slayer in this uh, variation here, right? So, let's take a look. As I said, elemental hit, combustion, uh, chain support, LA damage with attacks, GMP, and uh, merge archer for the AoE. And then we have LA damage, then damage of full life, combustion, and elemental hit as the single target. Uh, Frost Furnace is a really, really nice helm. The good thing is, if you check elemental hit, how many attacks it has, right? We have attack, projectile, melee, strike, fire, cold, lightning, AoE, bow. It's like nine tags that we have here. So it scales like with any kind of uh, LA skill. So here we have two level socket fire gems. Does count for LA hit. Uh, socket cold gems does count for LA hit. So we have uh, at least level, uh, four levels plus to our LA hit here. Then we have a call to fire support. This is why I want to talk about how I think it works. I'm not entirely sure as I said. Let's just write it down. Like, Let's say we do um, three. Uh, let's say we do uh, 100 fire damage, right? 100 cold damage and 100 lightning damage. So this is a build that does not do any kind of physical damage here, right? On this point. So that means if I'm just um, unequipping this one here and also this one. You see, it was a fire shot. Here is a lightning shot. Here is a cold shot. Fire. Then we continue with lightning and then cold shot. Oh, fire. So it, it switches randomly between those elements, right? There is uh, one, uh, like you have damage of every single type of uh, element here, right? So this is the thing. So it would technically do a total of 300 DPS, right? The problem is it can only choose one single element with each hit. And then it will only do the damage from this type, right? So if I shoot this now, this was cold. So I'm only doing 100 cold damage. Not lightning, not fire, just 100 cold damage. Here we have fire, just 100 fire damage, right? The way you can manipulate this is with the combat focus jewels. So they say uh, with at least like 40 strength and intelligence radius, um, your wild strike and elemental hit, so forget about the wild strike, but the elemental hit, uh, deal 50% less cold damage and cannot choose cold, right? 
So that means if I have here, I'm blocking the um, the cold one, right? So now my hits will only be fire and lightning. If I have the mana here. So uh, let's just remove that here for now. So we have a little bit more showcase. So now there is no cold anymore, right? So we basically skip that one now. So it will only do a total of like 200 at the moment. So forget about this number. This is just the roundup number, right? So we can do the same with fire and lightning too. Uh, but we choose to go with pure fire. So we're taking another one that blocks the lightning damage of it, right? So we're going to put this one over here. So now we only deal fire damage, right? So we, we remove this one and remove that one. And we now with every single hit, we're going to do this 100 fire damage. The way we can scale this is... Just with uh, pure fire damage, like Herald of Ash, then we have uh, Anger support uh, and uh, like Anger Aura. But there is another way to do it. And this is because I think, like, as I said, I never played LA Hit as the first time. I didn't really do research, but this is the way I found out it should work or this, uh, does work. But at least it does like in damage wise, right? So if we're taking a look now uh, with a Pyring, for example, we have 40% cold damage converted to fire damage, right? That means that our total DPS, let's say 40%, so we are doing 60 cold and 140, right? So this is my current number here. Although it will not choose cold, it will not choose lightning, the skill itself does have this uh, this 300 DPS right here, right? With every shot. But just it, it, uh, it just chooses one single type here, uh, and it will only do that damage. But still, you're doing this one like... Um, like, you're not doing it, but it's still there. It just doesn't do damage here, right? But if we are manipulating that one, that we are converting our cold damage into fire damage, we are taking a portion of that non-existing cold damage and add it to fire damage to do even more damage. The same counts with the Frost Ferno, which says uh, socket gems are supported by level 30 cold to fire support, right? So, if we're gonna take a look uh, cold to fire, what this is doing, you're converting a portion of your cold damage uh, to fire damage and you get extra fire damage based on your cold damage, right? Uh, so this also affects uh, this number here. And then on top of that, so that's why I think the power on this build at the moment, like I play it, is a little bit overkill because I used this one before I had Exhaust Blood. Exhaust Blood is basically uh, giving you Avatar of Fire. It means 50% of all damage that we are doing is converted to fire damage and we cannot deal any other thing than fire damage. So let's assume I have Avatar of Fire, right? And I block Fire and Lightning with the Combat Focus, so I only do Cold Damage. I would literally do no damage, because I cannot deal anything else besides Fire Damage here, right? It, in the tooltip, it doesn't even show that. So if I unequip this one, you're going to see that we now have... Uh, wait a second. Ah, uh, Combat Focus, wait a second. What was that? Show me. Fire Damage. What am I doing wrong? Now we have it. So, see, in the tooltip, you have lightning damage uh, to 7,000, fire damage to 10,000, and 2,000 cold damage, right? So when I'm uh, now I'm blocking those, uh, now the lightning damage disappeared, now the fire damage disappeared, right? So if I still uh, take out these ones here, and now I have all the three elements here, and I use the exhaust blood, I'm just converting 50% of that uh, into fire damage, but now it still only can do fire damage, right? Because I cannot do anything else because the avatar of fire says so. Okay, so, um, a little bit confusing here, I know, but still, you can, like, as I said, uh, for my understanding, you're always gonna do all the three types of elements, but it only chooses one, so the other one are just, like, disabled for that shot, right? But you can still take advantage of that and convert this, yeah, a hidden damage, basically, or non-existing damage into fire damage, and this is the way you can scale it. But as I said, I'm not a, I'm really good at this build. Because this is the first time I'm playing it. I'm literally playing it since uh, half a day when I leveled up. So at some point, I'm still going to be playing this build for a little bit of a time. Uh, until I maybe switch to the Impel Tornado Shot later on. I'm not sure about that one. But I still just wanted to show you the progress, what I did, what uh, my build decision was here. And uh, how did I approach it, right? In terms of the skill tree, nothing too special here. We start with a Slayer since we're um, a, s a Slayer, yeah. <laughs> Start with a duelist since we're a slayer. Uh, ascendancy. Uh, I take Endless Hunter and the Brutal Fervor. So a lot of people will ask now, why the hell did you pick Slayer out of uh, all the other Ascendancies, right? Uh, thing is, I really like the Overleech and I do like the uh, Overwhelm with the base crit, right? And the more damage we get here and cannot take Reflected Physical Damage, which doesn't matter in this build. 
but it will matter in the physical impale uh, build since I do only physical damage and here I'm reflect immune to fist which uh, gives me a really good shot on maps because I can run literally every single map mod besides the uh, cannon leech right but this mob uh, this um, mod is uh, rare anyways so um the next thing is uh, they nerfed Slayer, okay? So Overwhelm got nerfed by a half percent, so it was usually uh, attacks with this weapon base crit by 8%, now it's 7.5%, small nerf here. Uh, then this one stayed the same, Endless Hunger stayed the same, Hatsman stayed the same, Bane of Legends did get nerfed. Um, we, before that we had 20% increased attack speed and 20% increased movement speed. Um, it basically is an onslaught that is not onslaught, right? They nerfed this one to 10 and 10% instead of 20%. I'm not taking this anyway, so it doesn't really affect me at all, right? So, what else do we have to talk about? Skill tree as followed, just like uh, some attack speed notes here, a life cluster. Uh, then just uh, here with the combat focus, um, and on the top side here we have the Soul Raker that are usually Claw Nodes. So if I take out the Lioness Fall here, there is just Claw Nodes, but with the Lioness Fall I'm transferring or at least uh, converting those Claw modifiers into Bone uh, modifiers. So, yeah, if you are interested in that build, I mean, nothing too fancy over here right there. But as I said, I don't really want to make a full build guide about something that I'm not 100% sure how it works and uh, I cannot even provide an uber elder kill or footage like that. I'm just literally into mapping here, right? So the rest here, blink era, cosmic damage taken set up with steel skin, blood rage. Then we have herald of ash, war banner, anger and precision. I just leveling these gems uh, because I'm usually just using herald of ash and anger. Uh, and I skip the other two because I don't have an enlighten yet. So um, yeah, I don't really have the mana res uh, reservation uh, to do it. I mean, I probably can do it. Wait a second, it should actually work. But then I can oh shoot goodness. once, and if I don't have a target, I can literally do nothing for the couple of seconds, right? So I'm just skipping uh, the precision at the moment because I have enough hit chance uh, right now and the war banner as well. So yeah, just for clearing the Herald of Ash and Anger, I'm doing a lot of work here, right? So, anything else to talk about? Probably not. So, let's talk about the the goals for today, let's say it like that, okay? The goals for today is definitely clear all the white tier maps, right? So, I'm, I've done a lot of white tier maps yesterday, but still, I'm not like 100% clear, right? So, the plan would be clear all the white maps, maybe, like, clear all white maps, I'll try to clear off all of the yellow maps as well, so we push into high tier maps, uh, get at least level 90, and if if um, we maybe gonna transfer it into a tornado shot build, I'm not entirely sure because tornado shot got nerfed, right? The helm enchant plus two tornado shot and um, projectiles or secondary projectiles got nerfed to one, which I don't think. I mean, obviously in the super high end game, it's going to be a big nerf. But in early stages, who can afford this enchant early on anyways, right? So the plus two tornado shot was usually going on a devotus like 40 exalts or something. So super expensive. So I don't really think that I get my hands on one of these any anytime soon. So I don't think it's a big deal for me at the moment. And there is something else. A friend told me that um, the Rigwald Quills had a buck with Barrage and with tornado shot. Um, you know, the Rigwald Quills can fork, right? At least makes your projectiles fork. So the problem is it forked like three enemies per projectiles instead of one, right? So that it is actually basically a 200% nerf on this one. I'm not too sure about that one. It's just something I heard that might have been affecting why the builds, the Impel builds in Legion League in terms of Impel Tornado Shot were so good compared to probably nowadays done. But we're gonna test it, I think, anyway. So, uh, yeah. So then, uh, what else? Um, I think Uberlap is still on the list here. Um, I'm not really sure if I should go it right now. I mean, I do have 5k life, so it should actually be possible to do. Shouldn't be too hard. I do have a lot of single target damage as well. So probably I'm just going to start the stream off today with the uh, Uberlap. And then we're going to start more into the uh, Atlas and also doing some progression here. Don't forget, if for your Atlas progression, don't forget, uh, forget to buy maps of Sana. Also, for, don't forget, you are stacking Sana missions here, right? It's this one here. I have five white and one yellow here on Sana. The way you can do it, I don't know if there's another way. But if you talk to Sana, you have here Atlas mission, right? So you click on that, you're just gonna enter the map here. And once you open it, you're gonna have Sana in there 100%. The good thing is, 
um, the, the maps uh, from Sana, if you complete them, the mission itself, it counts for your Atlas progression, right? So if you're struggling with maps and you're like, ah, oh, shit, I cannot find the Mud Geyser map here, then try to make it with a Sana mission as well, right? I don't, I'm not sure if you can actually pick one of these here. Um, no, I probably cannot. So you really have to talk to the NPC or maybe I'm just bad and wrong. But yeah. Anyways, this is just a small tip. And also do all contents, right? Do all content. With that being... Do the master missions, right? Um, in the temple, you're getting maps. In Nico, in the in the asteroid mines, you're getting a lot of maps. Uh, June probably not, but Sana mission also gives you a lot of maps. So, if you're saying you cannot sustain any kind of maps, you're not getting any new ones, then farm your Atlas missions. Especially in the in the mine, you're getting a lot of. Um, I mean, in the, in the start, it takes a, quite a time to actually get going in the mine because if you're just like into maps, let's say you're level eighty, right? Um, you're still starting off your uh, travel, your journey here from level 67, basically. So it does take quite some time to get to a, a depth where you're actually feeling comfortable, where you say, okay, this is actually the difficulty that I have currently in my maps. So there, on those points, you're going to drop maps according to your level, right? And the start here, it's just like progressing through, but it doesn't really cost a lot. And yeah, Delph is fun anyways. All right, I think that's enough. Uh, I do have some plans, a lot of uh, stuff going on today uh, in today's stream. So if you want to check that out, feel free. Link is uh, given in the description below and also Twitch TV slash MB Extreme if you want to check this one out. As I said, I'm probably going to stay a little bit more on the LA hit side and maybe at some point I'm going to transfer into Impel Tornado Shot. Not 100% sure and just maybe I'm going to try it. Let's see about that. So guys, thanks for tuning in today. Thanks for watching and see you on the next video.